First batch of bombers rolling off the line. Looking good. In essence, Homeworld 3 was really our original dream of Homeworld 2. The problem was, in the late 90s, early 2000s, the vision for Homeworld 3 was utterly impossible to make. When we were first starting up on Homeworld 3, we were thinking, what are the, some of the coolest spectacles you can think of in the universe that you would want to play in or around massive battles in asteroid fields. Massive environments with these giant megaliths, you know, like gigantic Death Star size things that would create an interesting landscape for the player to move their units through. We had to wait 20 years before we could do that. So anyone who's interested in strategy or strategy like games, we want to immerse basically anyone who loves science fiction. It's unlike any other RTS game out there. For us, Homeworld 3 is a love letter to the fans of the franchise that have been with us over the last you know, 20, 22 years. And with Homeworld 3, we want to just continue that amazing feeling that you got from playing Homeworld 1 back in the day and give that to you again. We're bringing back individual control from Homeworld 1, so you'll be able to actually select your individual units, send them off, put them in specific formations. Sensors managers is a great way to be able to see the overview of the map and you know, focus being one of those features that makes sure people get right in there and see the full cinematic action that we're bringing. You can play Homeworld 3 at the pace that you want to play. Tactical pause is going to allow you to actually just pause the game 100%. We have a classic controls, which you'll know and love from Homeworld 2. And then we have our modern control scheme. And that one is built around FPS controls that you know and love from the games that you've played before. We could not be more excited about giving people the Homeworld 3 they've been waiting for for the longest time. But at the same time, we also want to build a product that's for many more people. So mobile players, RTS players from other games will be able to quickly understand, okay, if I want to go somewhere, I just click on this element here. I think what makes it different than other RTS games out there is it's incredibly cinematically compelling. It's incredibly immersive just from the dynamic environments, the way the camera works, the fact that you've got ship and air kind of combat happening together. Cinematic combat is such a huge pillar to the franchise. We want you to be able to get in there, find the coolest camera angle, and enjoy the spectacle. You can play the game how you want to play the game. The controls, the customization, the accessibility options that a game in 2023 has, we're really striving to make that happen. For anybody who's never played a Homeworld game, they'll be able to get right into the action. We're building Homeworld 3 on the rule of thirds. One third of that game is the game that you know and love. One third of it is better. And then one third of that is brand new. And for us, that's terrain. Terrain is massive, physically and figuratively in the game. We wanted choke points. We wanted interesting strategic decision making for the player. So we started thinking of these megalithic structures, you know, like unit filtration where the small ships could get through gaps, but the big ships couldn't and had to go the long way around. When engaging in combat, terrain will actually matter. If you want to go to 500 meters above you, there's an asteroid there. We have of tunnels where you can actually take your fighters and frigates through those things and that will actually remove you from the enemy sensors so you can ambush them every single bullet you see is simulated under the hood so you can actually use a larger ship to take fire for another ship my personal favorite strategy with terrain right now is making sure that you use that as a line of fire blocker you come up the side like doing some trench runs up the wall and then you engage them or they'll come over the edge and you, you start firing at them when they have no cover the terrain actually helps the player move around because you can just select your units and click on the terrain and they, they'll like pathfind through gaps and trench runs and holes in the structures and find their way. It's a great thing for new players to be able to access the game in a really satisfying and fun way. We really wanted to focus on frigates being our core gameplay. Think of them as tanks in World War II holding out cities. We think of the, the city as like a terrain field for us in Homeworld 3. Those buildings are like our asteroid fields. You want to put them and perch them around the asteroid fields so you get a good clean line of fire of anybody coming in from an open field or an open space. But there are elements 
elements from the Strikecraft class that counter those elements. So you have to be thinking, okay, they've got you know bombers which are good against my frigate class. Okay, now I'm gonna have to build anti-Strikecraft frigates to protect my anti-frigate class frigates. And you are constantly have this dilemma of like, which do I build here? What are they building? How do I counter that and as much as possible? We early on knew we wanted to do something that would bring more players into the RTS genre, bring more players into something that's new for Homeworld, and we wanted to do something that's replayable in some way. We started looking at the different games in the roguelike genre, and we started pulling elements in to RTS. The great thing about Homeworld is it already has persistence as a mechanic, and that is actually a hallmark of a, a roguelike in general. We wanted to do something around that idea in a mode that's kind of more reduced, so you have less to worry about and more RTS minus, but but then giving you all of these really cool things that can, you can break the meta and try new, new elements with. You'll come in with your friends and you'll be given a random objective for that specific mission that you're in. All of a sudden, incursions will start coming in. So the longer you stay in it, the more dangerous it will be. So you want to complete that objective as soon as possible. So some examples are you have to assassinate somebody that's moving through the sector. You have to defend civilians that are being engaged by enemy forces. You need to uh, escort a group from point to point and make sure that they have hyperspace to safety. And then the final mission is a unique boss mission. There's three of those that are possible in the pool, and then you'll have to defeat the boss. So in Homeworld 3, we focused a lot on what wasn't already available for us within Unreal. We wanted to figure out the more distinct views that the game would have that separate Homeworld from any other game, which was the, mostly the skybox and the lighting to give that feel of being in space. When you go into a nebula, the ship understands how much coverage it has from that, which will affect the concept of fog of war in the game. We knew that we wanted persistent damage on the ships, and so then we focused on what that system would be like. Each weapon type has a specific scar capable element on a ship and it will show if it's uh, laser or ion cannon versus projectile. You'll see the history of your battles as you go through the whole campaign. One of the biggest creative challenges is to get people to feel something for these ships. Then we always felt that the ships were the characters in the game. And we wanted to also make sure that the ship exposed its inner guts to give that sense that the ship is not just a hollow piece of uh, metal. We do all that stuff really to give a very realistic feel and to just give the user the satisfaction of that feedback. With this game, we know that PC gamers love to push visuals, and we love to support that. We spent quite a bit of time building in a scalability system, so you know we want to make sure that people can enjoy this with all different types of rigs. But there's a lot that you get when you have a really kick-ass rig. And so we have support for turning on ray trace shadows. The ships have more dynamic damages at higher levels. So if you're on a higher rig, you're gonna have more ships that will have that dynamic system like the mothership does. You get full fidelity of the lighting um, and the screen space reflections will be kick-ass. <laughs> I think every IP has a very few number of key ingredients that make it what it is. In the case of Homeworld, it's the look and feel, the tone, the environments, the look of the ships, the sound of the ships, the sound of the music, the sound of the voices and the fleet. And in Homeworld 3, we're introducing characters in a way that we never could do in Homeworld 1 or 2. So that's exciting and, and it's fun to explore what on a deeper human level these people are going through. So, you know, Dave and, and the audio crew did this incredible job of building this multi-layered dynamic sound system. We'll just do the, uh, the first line uh, down to Moments Are Eternal. Okay. In that wistful tone. Perfect. All right. Truth, Imogen, is that this waterfall reminds me to endure the chaos of the moment. That the beauty of the future is always worth it. For Homeworld 3, it was really important that we create a sense of a living universe, that this is a fleet of people who have dinner with each other, that meet each other in the hallways, that go out on missions, they experience things together, and they go through this journey of the campaign all together. So it only made sense for us to make sure the pilots were talking to each other. To that end, we designed extensive scripts and systems to have them doing calls and responses, that a player command isn't just a one-off line back to the player to confirm a piece of information, 
but it's dialogue between the pilots. Target received and locked. Passives on approach. Line him up at range plus five. As the player interacts with the units, they're responding not only with the player, but with each other in the environment in a very believable and compelling way. So you really feel like they're living people on board, the pilots that you care about and you want to take care of them. This is Karkushan DC, approach vector and bay sent. You're one in line. We give a voice to the ships. We try to humanize these little metal boxes and make it interesting for players to just follow them around. Each unit actually has a name. They actually have like a commander or lieutenant, uh, something, something packed to or uh, lore wise. And so you'll actually be able to try to save them, keep them alive for as long as possible. You will be able to tell by listening to the pilots whether a battle is going well, whether it's going poorly. When it's going well, they'll talk more about engaging the enemy, about lining up strategies between each other. When it's going poorly, they're talking about their ships being hit, their ships taking damage, and there's stress in the voices. The units can report back being like, I'm under attack by a corvette, or I'm under attack by an assault frigate, or I'm attacked by some kind of like larger ship. Contact. Enemy corvette in weapons range. We're reflecting the gameplay feature in the chatter, and if you're close enough to the ships, you'll hear them talking about it. So if they're flying through a nebula, for instance, you'll hear them talking about their sensor is giving them false returns. If they're right near terrain, they'll be mentioning pieces of terrain that, that could act as cover. So by listening to the pilots, you can really get a sense of how things are going. And then you can prioritize as the commander which elements are important for you to go and deal with. When it's all working and all the art is there and the effects are there and the sound and the music and all of this incredibly complicated ballet of interactive systems are working just so beautifully, the edges of the screen just melt away and dissolve and you just immerse into the world and you no longer feel like you're playing a game, that you're just in the world and you know the game and you are together. And for me, that's why, that's why we make games and, and that's, that's what we hope to deliver to people to play. Please wishlist and pre-order the game. We're super excited to have you.